what you're saying is really interesting. Like this data has been around forever, mm -hmm. but you know the credit card companies hold it and they don't share it with people. Mm -hmm. But now you're at this point where you know everyone shares everything through through Facebook. Like people are building apps that like when you swipe your credit card and it, it automatically shows up in your in your Facebook feed about the things that you're buying. And you know it's um. Have you guys seen that? It's like Blippi and yeah. Swipe. Right. Yeah, interesting. Everything you buy on iTunes gets shared, mm -hmm. um, and it, which is fine if you have control over it. But have you guys ever been tagged in a photo that you don't want to be tagged yeah. in yeah. on Facebook? Yeah, absolutely. Like that's where it breaks. Like I will, you know, I called into work sick today, but here's a picture of me at the beach, right. and someone else tagged me. <laughs> like that's where it, that's where it starts to to break. And we're and those things are just. Like we're just starting to explore what happens then, and like it, it's kind of uncharted territory. It makes it. It was interesting because I was talking to when I first actually it was my son, my teenage son, who put me up on Facebook and made the account for me and everything, and has since defriended me. But <laughs> go figure. Um, but friend again. I kept saying to him, you know, Felix, how do I, you know, if I, how about if I want to talk to somebody privately, you know, how do I do that? And he, he would kind of look at me genuinely perplexed. Well, why why would you want to do that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Oh, sorry. Go After you. <laughs> Go, you know what we're going to do? You two have finished your thoughts, and then we are going to take questions. There are microphones. Um, so get ready with questions. And if you want a mic, put your hand up, make yourself available, and you will get a microphone brought to you, I hope. Um, and, but carry on. Uh, right. I, I, there are two elements. There's exhibitionism and there's voyeurism. And I always ask myself how even voyeurism is very but difficult. It's fantastically exciting. Because there's a little areas. kid I know who's grown up, and now there are pictures of her kissing her boyfriend. And I see her now, and I'm like, I can't say, oh, hi, little girl. I'm like, yo, I saw that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how much do you admit? And, and I ask myself. To what you've seen of something. Right. That's be, an equally be, difficult. Yeah, um, right. Before um, you're seen as a pervert. <laughs> yes. Voyeurism oh. is very much Sorry. a part of this thing. You told us, Raghava. <laughs> but what's amazing about Facebook and Foursquare is that in a TV era, when you know, I was young, TV was the only media, I had the re real sense of real time, like, you know, this is the moment I have to consume. But if I hear it now, you have both, you know, the re sense of real time and also sense of archive. Yeah. And that, that kind of parallel existence makes it really interesting that how interconnectivity is kind of broadening the perception of, uh, you know, connection, basically. Connection or uh, consuming the uh, certain moment. Yeah, it's also interesting. It's like, you know, the TV was the thing that which you, you know, had most of your shared experiences a while ago. Right. And TV is like just, it's a one-player medium. It's like me watching TV. And everything online is a multiplayer medium. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, TV just seems kind of broken. Like, why am I not watching this with all my friends, you know, via some online channel? Why, you know, why is the TV not connected in the same way that Facebook is connected? And those are, or Xbox games or whatever it is. That yeah, it's like those boxes connected yeah. to those things that are connected, but what you're watching on that screen is not connected. Is there way. so much of it, though? Sorry, and I, I know I said we will get to quite... I just have one thought. Is there so much of it... Um, that is doable, playable, thinkable, clickable, you know, shareable, that we have lost any sense of a public space. What, like, like you say about TV, like show you say, you know, you grew up in the world where you're TV and we've already become a very fragmented TV nation, but this is, a, this is that to the nth degree. But there used to be a time when everybody sat down, watched the same TV news bulletin, and then went away and discussed it the next morning in the office, mm -hmm. having had that shared public space. That seems to me that is, although you are sharing individually, there's no, there's no uh, shared experience. Show national yeah. experience in I that think, respect. Or is I that think, not well, true? Look at, look at the World Cup. If there, I, mean, the right. I mean, there's huge, right. there's huge true. opportunities for shared right. expense, uh, uh, experiences. And, and at the time when there's such proliferation of us living with our devices and connecting in that way and asynchronously, there's a huge proliferation of these kinds of gatherings. I mean, what, TEDx, there's 1,800 on the books just this year. People are dying to come together in physical spaces to experience something at the same time. Mass hysteria? What's that? Mass hysteria? I, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, maybe not mass hysteria. But, so kidding. there's a real desire for, at the time when, when the distinction between online and offline has gone away because we're constantly connected, we're constantly for people playing. to actually be, be grounded in some place. People just want to connect with people. We've been watching TV by ourselves for too long. Like now we have tools that can help us actually go out in the real world and make the most of our time and you know, 
connect with people more efficiently in the in the real world. But you know, more efficient way to connect with this would be just to watch this entire thing online, and yet there's right. a room full of people. And yeah, yeah. we're all here. We want to be here. Yeah. And yeah. 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 The That's quality the, of the of the conversation and the connection. And it's just is different. interesting that TV has not died yet. That people actually do still like the idea of sitting down as a family or as right. a couple or whatever, as a group of friends, and watching football or mm -hmm. some soap or whatever it is. Okay, I did promise I got. There's one right here. Can we get a microphone nice. right behind you? <clears throat> there we go. Okay. We're such babies in this <laughs> nervous system, this interconnectedness that we've created. And it's all about skillful means. When I was in architectural school, I used to go see Bucky Fuller lecture about how it's all interconnected. I was so inspired. And now I've been practicing for 30 years, and it's a pain in the ass. I mean, everything's all interconnected, and we bump into each other. And, and I can't do that because I have to think about this. But think about the data that's being created about the carbon footprint of everything in the, in, in, in the Internet of Things. Think about the way that, you know, there are only so many ascended masters like Bucky Fuller who could hold everything in their head and see the big picture, but we have GIS and we have these databases that we're creating for some reason we feel we need to so that we can see the pattern of life. So we're babies and we're playing around with social things and this and that, but we're just starting to figure out how to use this nervous system we've created for some reason because we couldn't help ourselves. So where do you think it goes? When, we've, when we're grown up, what does it look like? That's hard to say. When we're grown up, we have the possibility to actually be mindful about uh, the uh, interconnected web of life, about interdependent origination and the effect of our actions on other people, because we actually have no excuse not to know that there actually is a war going on in Rwanda that there actually is a fire down the block. I mean, that, that there is a crisis that needs to be helped, that, that, that we don't know yet how to connect with the person across the room. These are things we can actually aspire to doing something different with. Our, our, my grandfather, my God, you know, he never would have thought that would be possible. So we're babies. I mean, we're all here because we're inspired to try and figure out how to do it. And that's what Ted does for people. Gavin, is that where we go when we're grown up? Um, we know a, that we know what the it, it, we know how to use the system and. It, to it's a good question. I, I think I, I see a few things. Um, one of them is I see, you know, as social networks have demonstrated, is everybody has a potential for fame, whether that's with you know their twenty mm -hmm. friends or their you know two million followers or whatever. But you also have this uh, notion. And not always in productive or creative ways. <laughs> not, not, not doesn't have to be, but I think you, you also have this. Everything is archived always, so you have this uh, to play back. You know, one of the earlier talks about you know fame not being or success not being about you know fame or fortune. It's about you know, what, what's the legacy you've left, and we have this opportunity for kind of an infinite legacy which we don't even need to actively participate in because we're leaving our data footprints all the way through the system and all of that is being archived forever so you can start to build up this other picture of the world which is beyond our own sort of temporal existence so what happens if it's like we're like we're behind bars and that unbelievable quote about I don't want to be remembered for the worst thing that I ever did in my life so if everything we do is being archived are we going to be then picked out and we'll become that single story? I think we'll, we are disembodied in ourselves. So we don't want to be known by, I don't want an elevator pitch as to who I am, you know, not because I've But now you can have everything archived, you know, all, everything you ever but did. And someone remembered. can choose I mean, to go um, to. Yeah. It's not all remembered. We pluck. Well, except that, I mean, you know, if you get to the stage um, where Dennis is at and beyond that, and you extrapolate beyond that, where everything that you put is online, it all gets remembered. It's all there. And that's what's so fascinating, I think, about what you're doing, is that there isn't a barrier between what you, really what you choose to put and what you don't choose to put, that everything is put out there. But then it's a flood, right? And at that point, it's, you know, the data just I, basically goes in the background. I don't know. You just need I better mean, filters. Like, data yeah. helps you make smarter decisions right. about anything. Get data on anything, you make smarter decisions, yeah. right? So, Give me some data that shows, like, when I eat strawberries in the morning, like, I actually get through more emails in the afternoon. You know, when I, you know, if, if, if I eat too much steak, then I don't, then I end up running less, right? These are the data points that we now have that we can collect for the first time. Like, Foursquare is starting to do it with, like, the places that you go. Facebook does it with the people that you interact with online. And, like, you know, we've had these, these data points for financial models and things for a long time, but maybe not, and we're just getting them for personal finance. Like, oh, really, I shouldn't eat out as much because that's where the majority of my money is going to, and everyone's been tracking that by hand, but now there's tools that make it easier. 
And so, you know, if you look at the things you consume, the, the foods that you eat, the media that you watch, the people that you hang out with, the places that you go to, your carbon footprint, like all these data points put together in smart little, you know, in, in smart ways can help you make better decisions about your life. And I think that's, you know, people get really stressed out about a lot of the data because we're just collecting it, we're not analyzing it. And we're just at that first generation of, of things that are like, let's look at this stuff and right. help people make better and smarter so the next, choices. So the next smart tools are going to be the analytical tools of the data and the filtering tools of the data. Yeah, I mean, it's just... And that's what Foursquare is already doing. Yeah, well, as you're saying, like yeah. the credit card or companies the, have been collecting a lot of the right. data, but let's make, let's make data sets that then people have access to, like that real people have access to, so other developers, people in this room, students at NYU have access to, right. so they can make the analytics. One, one second, I don't even agree with that because... I don't think data can solve, they can, it can address a specific task, not a holistic task. It can never make us better people. I don't believe that. Because there are people who are much better than us who have no freaking information in India. Yeah. You know, I don't buy that. You know, data can solve the world. I'm not saying it's going to solve, but it helps you make better decisions about the things that can solve Very specific, consumer-driven things, I think. Uh, I does, don't know. It help, I don't does it help you make d better, more creative decisions about your art or not? No, my intuition does. Much better than data. I, in fact, go against data very often. So you think that the... Yeah, well, hold you, on. Oh, yeah. we're, we are the lucky ones in this room. We are not poor and we're not overweight and we're, all, like, we're not incredibly obese and we're like... We, we, like, we're all pretty well educated here. Like, for people that need some kind of inspiration and motivation and help, getting on the right track like there's there's tools that people can build to help folks do that like we're you know we're building these things for us because we're the ones using it and we're the ones that understand it but like you fast forward that five years and it's helping people that that need help to to get things done i understand but you can't make a blanket statement that data is equal to you know there are people who are intuitive and there is a wealth of knowledge that you cannot chronicle and i think you can't ignore that and that's okay do you, think, do, you th do you think it's actually... There's a lot of questions out yeah, there, okay. More sorry. questions, yes, sorry. Um. Yes, hi. Um, well, from a creative point of view, I think it's interesting that, obviously, the amount of information that we have uh, is very inspiring, and, um, you know, we can get a lot of ideas from it. Uh, the amount of data or information is obviously not the same thing as understanding the data, which takes some personal introspection introspection and I think it's interesting if you uh, the creators of Foursquare and, and, and Facebook and Twitter they were probably not you know had the phone ringing all the time when they were doing it so so you know when you need to be creative you have to find a space where you don't have all the noise and that's sort of the paradox of it because uh, you know without that, that uh, personal time I don't think that what you're gonna do is gonna be unique and, you know, as another paradox, I think that a lot of people are doing things that uh, having a lot of ideas, but the interconnectivity can make you feel like, I'm sure someone else has done this before. And, you know, if you were on yourself in your own little, you know, city, Stockholm, for example, you know, it, you, you probably, you know, before the Internet, you would just march on and get your own experiences from what you were doing, and you wouldn't be worrying about that the rest of the world maybe was on the same path you would have your own personal experience from your own journey, and it wouldn't be, have to be quantified in, in, you know, in a larger uh, scope. I think that's really true. I'm sure all of us have had exa uh, examples of a time when we've had to do a study project or an idea for a story or an idea for a, an art or a business, and we've looked up and, and you, know, you start Googling it, and you find that actually 15 other people have you know, had your, the plot for your novel already, and it puts you off, whereas actually you would have. <laughs> carried on and you would have produced of course something that was different from those 15 other people's because it would have been your own. Or, and it or, would have had or you your, find your the three other people on earth are interested in the weird thing that you're interested in. Which would be great. Right. And, and you'd learn from right. that experience mm -hmm. and do the plus right. one thing yeah, you were which is about the, More questions. Uh, Lots more right here, yeah. You seem um, to have the microphone. <clears> and then we'll go over to this side of the room. Do you ever think we're going to get to the point where we're living so far out loud where we're just going to have to do things like legalizing marijuana because you can tell everyone who's smoking marijuana you know, that, that every, every sin's out there in the open, and, you know, you can tell where you, where you were last night, you know, and, you know, we need to acknowledge our sins and that'll make us better people because we're not locking up the wrong guy because he was nowhere near there because he had a Twitter feed that exonerated him or things like that. <laughs> um, Sonny. Wow. This is, gets to a little bit about the idea of playing hooky and being tagged <laughs> in, yeah, in the photo of the beach. 
I, I, it, it's interesting to think, uh, to my knowledge, I don't know that there's been any, with all the geolocation now, you will be able to use that in evidence. So if all of our phones have geolocation in them, and you're supposed to be at some sort of scene of the crime, and then they'd have to prove that you had the phone. So.